Hello and welcome to part three of our webinar series. All webinars are available on our website at www.zimmerusa.com. Today's webinar, Z-Wave Utility in a Cosmetic Medicine Practice, is presented by Zimmer Aesthetic Division. I'm Regina West, and I'll be moderating the webinar today. During the presentation, you may submit questions by typing them in the Questions tab on your webinar control panel. If there's time following today's pre presentation, we may be able to cover those questions during the webcast. If there's not enough time remaining for Q&A, answers to your questions will be emailed to you. <laughs> I'd now like to introduce the presenter of today's webinar, Dr. Mark J. Salzman. Dr. Salzman is a board-certified plastic surgeon, and his practice, Salzman Cosmetic Surgery and Spa, is located in Louisville, Kentucky. Dr. Salzman completed a general surgery residency and was chief resident at the Mount Sinai Medical School in New York City. His plastic surgery fellowship was at Duke University. He's also an associate clinical professor of plastic surgery at the University of Louisville Division of Plastic Surgery. Welcome, welcome again, everyone. Dr. Salzman, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, Regina. I'll now give you uh, control of the presentation, Z-Wave Utility in a Cosmetic Medicine Practice. And in just a moment, we should be able to see your screen. Give me a moment. And we see your presentation. So it's not. Okay, everybody, we're starting. Thank you, Regina. So we're going to talk about uh, Z-Wave, which is a, a cool product. This is what it, what it looks like, what the screen looks like, and what the machine looks like. It's fairly compact, easily fits in a closet. It really looks like something Apple would have made, very sleek and slick looking. For those of you who don't know about Zimmer Medicine Systems, it's a privately owned German company that makes medical devices. It's been around since the late 60s, based out of New Ulm, Germany, over 45 years in the business. Their factory is in Germany. They employ close to 300 people worldwide, represented globally by a network of local distributors. Here in the U.S., there's two American locations, both on the East Coast and on the West Coast. Well, what is extracorporeal shockwave therapy, or ESWT? It's different to what people get confused with because it's not focused ultrasound like you'd break a kidney stone. It's mechanically generated external linear sound waves. It's initially been used in physical therapy, really, to provide treatment for patients who have injury, trauma, or post-surgery, and it's used to clear swelling of damaged tissues. It gently pushes the lymphatic, so it's a lymphatic massage, an adjunct to liposuction. We'll talk about that later. It has been shown to increase blood flow, and with repeated use, you get neocollagenesis and angiogenesis, and that becomes important later in some of the uses that we're using this thing for. In aesthetics, uh, the 510K is cleared for a treatment of cellulite. Most commonly in our practice and across the U.S., it's used as an adjunct to some of the uh, non-invasive body contouring devices, such as Cool Sculpt, Vanquish, Ultra Shape, Sculpture, uh, and others. I'm sure uh, other reported uses: uh, lymphatic massage, reduction of edema, treatment of adhesions after surgical procedures. We're going to talk about a unique treatment that I've developed with capsular contracture, uh, certainly after chemical lipolysis to distribute edema. Uh, after mirror dry, which I don't have and can't comment on, and certainly any other cosmetic procedure that results in uh, edema or protracted recovery. Well, what is the technology? Well, these are pressure sound waves that are spread radially into the tissue, so they dissipate as they're passing through the tissue. So they're not, they're, they're linear, but they're spreading out from superficial to deep. And the handpiece is very ergonomic. It, it fits in the average person's hand. I'll show you it later, Brittany, our, our person doing it. It's it's quite easy to do. Short term, it causes an increase in blood flow caused by the vasodilatation. But long term, it does cause neoangiogenesis, so you have improvement of blood flow. And we'll look at a paper that demonstrates that. It does push the lymphatics at positive or negative pressure, so you're doing the, the washout of the toxins and the triglycerides. If you have any type of uh, fat necrosis that's happened from your non-invasive procedure, it's helping uh, push that extracellular free fatty acid to the lymphatic so it can then head to the liver. Uh, so it, 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 it works by both mechanical and biochemical lipolysis as far as fat goes. Uh, there's a relaxation of fibrotic structures, which we're gonna talk about for cellulite and how it can pull on these little septa. 
and it's been shown to strengthen the conducted the connective tissue between the fat to improve the elasticity and firmness of the skin. This is a, a monograph of kind of how it works conceptually for uh, cellulite. And what you see on the left is how cellulite kind of, kind of forms. And those big red, big red tree-like structures that are extending from scarpus fascia to the dermis, they get foreshortened and tight as there's a, an increase of swelling from either hyperplasia or number of fat cells between scarpus fascia and the dermis. And it's those, it's those little tight areas of septa that really are pulling down on the dermis and creating these little depressions that we see in cellulite. In the cellulite study that was done in Spain by Dr. Naranjo, he looked at LCCT, which is a way of therm thermography, looking at uh, heat distribution. And as you can see uh, with this study, you can see after this, this was done that the temperatures have gone up. There's uh, greens and reds, which tend to create a higher temperature than what the baseline temperatures were uh, above. In his cellulite study, he goes on to look at the high frequency, high resolution ultrasound images, uh, which we have used in our office for treating patients with uh, adjuncts like cellulose smooth that uh, break up fat and can actually cut these septa. You can actually see these septa live as you're doing these procedures. And th these aren't great pictures, but what they're trying to show is that the top picture it's kind of a waviness of the dermis because the distance between the superficial fascia, which is that middle white line, and the dermis, which is the top white line, they're little structures that are segmentally kind of pulling things down. And after this uh, procedure is done, you can see it's a more linear uh, fashion. There's not as much undulation of the upper dermis, and that's strictly from the stretching of these vertical septa. And here's some pictures uh, from Zimmer of patients that were done with six. Z-Wave sessions for cellulite. And I just want to comment on cellulite because a, a lot of patients, at least in my practice, that come and say they have cellulite don't truly have cellulite. The, the cellulite that this is going to work on is in a chunky leg. It's not in the, in the skin laxity type setup where the lady puts her hands around both sides of her thigh and pulls up and says, look how good this looks all the way down to my knees. This is what I want. There's no amount of external tightening that's going to help that. And there really isn't in, any type of loosening of these vertical septa that's going to help that. This is the situation that depicts what we saw in that monograph, that the little tethered points are being pulled out down because the underlying fat is hypertrophy. This is a, a tight skin envelope, not a loose skin envelope. This is true cellulite. So there's another before and after. <clears throat> Same leg, before and after. This is a close-up just showing you in the thigh buttock crease. How much better this can look after and these these patients are between six and ten treatments weekly another before and after another one and you know th this is for me this this is a great non-invasive uh result that you can treat cellulite because there's really not a whole lot you can offer this lady if you decompress her, her lateral thighs on her trochanteric fat deposit and hip usually these depressions get worse when the, the skin is of this quality. And this is after abdomen 3Z way obsessions. Uh, this is looking at uh, cellulite by Dr. Karen Kunze Rapp, and uh, they showed definitively that radial shock waves that activated the metabolic activity stimulated blood and the production of collagen. So it was comparable that they concluded that radio shock waves therapy reduced the appearance of cellulite, and it usually does between six and 10 uh, sessions for this type of a patient. Major uses we've talked a little bit about uh, in the US are after body sculpting, non-invasive uh, situations. And it diminishes the pain, a quicker recovery, improved and more consistent outcomes. And sometimes it actually shortens the lag time until you see the result as well. So whether you're heating it with RF, uh, freezing it with CoolScope, non-contact RF with Vanquish or uh, UltraShape, Thermy, anything like that, Kybella, uh, this is used as an adjunct to those treatments. Some emerging applications we're going to talk about in a few minutes, capsular contracture, which we've developed in our office. I frankly have not tried it for sexual wellness, but I understand people have treated the perineal body and it has helped increase blood flow and increase uh, sexual wellness. It's certainly helpful after tummy tucks that have a venous congestion. It's a way of doing a massage a couple of weeks out. Uh, to help that uh, alleviate more quickly. Um, after fat transfer to kind of smooth everything out, 
uh, it's used for Sculptra to kind of smooth everything out and distribute the Sculptra, Sculptra more consistently in the subcutaneous space. And certainly for granulomas that are like fat necrosis, it's very, very uh, well used for that in our office. Tattoo removal is kind of something new we're going to talk about. I've not used it for that, but it, it makes sense. There's over 10 published studies looking at uh, the, the Z-Wave in this regard. This is the Hunt study that looked at cool sculpting, and you can see the yellow top curve versus the black uh, dotted curve on the bottom. And there was a 22% reduction of fat with Z-Wave after cool sculpting at two months versus 12% with hand massage. And what this means uh, is if you do cool sculpting, you take the applicator off and you got this big frozen stick of butter, what used to be done was to take your hand and massage this and try and smooth it out. And I think there's probably some degree of lipolysis for cells that are just hanging on. Am I going to live or am I going to die? But then when you do this with Z-Wave and you're pounding this with these sound waves, it, it, the, the frozen fat dissipates more quickly. And I think some of the cells that otherwise would have survived <laughs> undergo immediate lipo lipolysis. So instead of a programmed apoptosis three months later, these cells are dead, you know, minute one of hitting them with the Z-Wave. And it, it, it definitely shortens the lag time until you see the result. And there's, there certain, certainly seems to be less discomfort uh, if you do this with cool sculpting versus not doing it. Definitely a quicker result. And this is just some photos showing hand massage on the left, two months post, Z-Wave on the right, it's just more effective at augmenting your result with cool sculpting. We use it on, on every cool sculpting patient. And here's a two one hour uh, cool sculpting treatments immediately followed by the, the Z-Wave. And it's not a long thing, it's a 15 minute thing that adds to it, it's not very involved. And there's hand massage on the left and Z-Wave on the right, clearly a difference. Uh, tattoo removal is uh, cool. Uh, we do tat removal, tattoo removal in our office. And if you use these shorter wavelength la lasers, nano and picosecond lasers, uh, you really can only treat a tattoo one time because you get this bubbling, these micro bubbles of gases that then turn the tissues a frosty white. And none of the laser wavelengths can penetrate white. So you're down to one uh, treatment per session or one pass per session, per session or one wavelength. Um, there used to be a method called the R20, which we never really did because it didn't make sense. Uh, where you treat it with one wavelength, wait 20 minutes for the frost to dissipate, treat it again, wait 20 minutes for the frost to dissipate, treat it again. And the patient can be there for, you know, three hours for a $300 procedure. It just didn't make sense. If, if anybody's used the PFD patch, PFD uh, perfluorodecalin absorbs the gases. So you put this patch over the, the tattoo while you're treating it and you... Uh, absorb the gas. You, we, we've treated them five, six, and seven passes with three different wavelengths all in the same treatment with no more epidermolysis than doing just one treatment. It's really quite cool. But if you add the Zimmer after you're, you're treating it with, with the laser, it's going to break the pigment up even more so the macrophage can eat more of the pigment up sooner. And this is just comparison on the volar forearm uh, with a fairly easy to remove tattoo using 1064 a Pico Way Cineron machine at that Pico wavelengths. And you can see on the right side, the owner side of the hand, the faster dissipation of the tattoo pigment with the same treatments on both sides. Really quite cool. That's just the rest of the paper. In Bailey's paper, they looked at Vanquish, which we do a ton of. Uh, they looked at no massage versus Z-Waves, Z-Wave after Vanquish, and there's a 64% improvement outcome with the Z-Wave. Um, for capsular contracture, this is something that uh, I developed kind of fortuitively, I think. Um, this is Brittany, who's in our office, treating this patient with Z-Wave. And essentially start out low, what they can tolerate, and move up as the treatment goes along. And we do this weekly until the, it's dissipated. It's usually a four to six uh, treatment, uh, so it's a month and a half uh, treatment protocol. Um, just to explain a little bit about capsular contracture, it's one of the more frustrating things that we as plastic surgeons deal with because it doesn't make sense that it would be unilateral if the same implant, the same histology, the same everything's going on, same water, same irrigation, whatever it is. Um, things that have been tried in the past, certainly leukotriene inhibitors, accolades, singular, there's some anecdotal evidence that they work. We certainly try them 
first. I, I don't think they're that effective in my hands. Uh, we've used ultrasound in the past. I've not bought into this Aspen machine, which is a, a specifically made supposedly for um, capsular contracture. And that they used to rent it, and I understand they sell it now. If you have that many capsular contractures, that you need to buy a machine for that. You may need to look into doing something differently with the breast. Um, but most of these things seem to fail and it necessitates a, an open capsulotomy, capsulectomy, and uh, re usually a re replacement of the implant. This was what a, a rabbit study that I looked at that kind of prompted me to think, well, maybe this does work or will work. And this was done in Korea, 30 cc implants in rabbits, six treatments uh, in total, one per week, five hertz, which is a little low, a thousand pulses at two atmospheres. And they did MRI and histology, and they showed all of these changes, mixoid change, capsule fixing, collagen deposition, and the water content. All of this supported that there was less scar of the capsule, which is not, it, it's very intuitive when you think about it. Um, this is our paper that we submitted we, with one of our fellows. We had nine patients, 35 to 59. They all had grade two or three capsules, and they all had early capsules. These are not well-established capsules that have been there. These are not calcium uh, ca uh, capsules that you see on an x-ray. Uh, we did three to six weekly treatments. Uh, we started low at 90, moved up to about 180, started 8 to 10 hertz, moved up to 16, and somewhere between 2,500 and 5,000 uh, cycles. We had one patient lost to follow-up. The resolution of the capsular contracture happened in, in eight of the other patients. I've never seen it, anything that worked uh, like this. We may have just been lucky, but I think it works. This is the patient that really caused me to try it for the first time. It was a lady who was a wife of one of my nurse anesthetists. She had 20 plus year old gel implants in the subglandular space. Both implants on ultrasound were broken. And I told her, you know, we got to do a complete capsulectomy, get all the gel out and then move them under the muscle. She was an older lady in her 60s and she didn't want to go through the period of time where the muscle had to relax and the overlying soft tissue envelope we all stretched out. It wouldn't look very good for a couple of months. If anybody's done that operation, you know what I mean. So she opted to put the implants back in the subglandular plane. And when I do that, what I usually do is wrap it or at least cover the anterior surface of the capsule with stratus. Well, she didn't want to do the stratus. Stratus, as we all know, costs a fair amount of money. She said, I'll take my chances. So we do a capsulectomy, put two brand new implants in. Within six weeks, the left side started getting hard. And so I thought to myself, we had just done one of our other nurses who had bad um, plantar fasciitis, and she had like 15 treatments with Z-Wave, but it completely dissipated. And when I think about how thick that plantar fascia is and how long it took it to stretch, and the fact that it worked in these little rabbits, I said, all right, we're going to try this. Before we did it, we took a couple of the implants that were sitting on our table that we show our patients, and I had my fellow take the, the Z-Wave without any interposition of anything, so no breast or towel or anything between the, the implant and the end of the machine, and he put it on full everything, maximum, held it there for 20 minutes, and we couldn't fracture any of these implants. So we thought it was quite safe to go ahead and, and do this. So we treated her six times. And this is after the treatments. The left implant was up and high. Unfortunately, I didn't have that picture. She had two perfectly soft implants. And now it's been about, I'd say, two and a half years now. It's still a grade one capsule. Just I had never seen anything like that. So we kept going, thinking, well, it worked once. Let's keep going. Here's another one that we did. We did capsulectomy replacement with gel implants. She got hard a couple of weeks out. Same thing on the left side, implants up. Six Z-wave treatments. This is about two months later. Implants drop down into the, where it's supposed to be, grade one capsule, and has remained so. This is about a year and a half out. Here's some patients that we have done in our office that Brittany, as our uh, body contour specialist, has done. This is a cellulite, 10 treatments. This is Exilus, which is uh, outside in uh, RF, uh, then Z Wave as an adjunct to Exilus. This is Vanquish, which is non contact RF. And if you don't, people don't know about that, uh, non-contact RF and Vanquish, it works. It's the only thing that really works well for intra-abdominal fat that I've seen. So for, for men, it, it seems to be a pretty good treatment when you can't do cool sculpting where there's really nothing to pull out. And so we like to, to use the Vanquish with the Z-Wave and we think it augments the result and certainly makes it quicker. And they seem to get less fat necrosis, which is interesting. Here's a, another patient who had Vanquish semi, a woman, and with the vanquish, they get a little skin tightening that they don't get with cool sculpting. And Z-Wave certainly helps that to come along more quickly. Uh, here's a front and side view, another patient who had her hips and her abdomen done. 
vanquished, and vanquished goes two thirds and round away. This lady was flipped over. She had her belly done on her back. We flip her over and do her hips from the front side. And this is a three quarters view. Another patient, cool sculpting and Z-Wave. See how much thinner that infra umbilical uh, fat is. This is something I just did the other day, about two weeks ago, and I, I thought, just let me try it for this. I've tried it for other things, it seems to work. This is a lady who had a persistent seroma, uh, super umbilically after a tummy tuck, and I had been serial aspirating it for a couple of weeks under ultrasound. So the ultrasound image on the right just shows the uh, sonocyte uh, cannula, which is something you can see very well in ultrasound, in the middle of the black, which is the seroma, and we aspirated all the seroma. But there's still this thicker black. It's hard to see on this image, but if you look at the skin, then there's some, some black with a little bit of white in it below that. But all that thick stuff that's white that's on top of the seroma is all thick tissue. It's the scar tissue of a pseudocapsule or pseudobursa. So I was going to put some triamcinolone. So under ultrasound, I put the needle in and put a bunch of triamcinolone right into the capsule. And I thought, all right, well, why not just move all that around with Z-Wave? The Z-Wave is going to help break it up anyway. I think it's going to help disseminate the uh, triamcinolone. So this is us doing it real time, just on an in-plane technique. And that's the, the triamcinolone in my left hand. And I'm watching it go in on the screen in multiple places. And then this is an image of what that looks like with you see the stonocyte needle directly into the area that's just above what's left of the stroma. And this is a, a, a four centimeter scale. So this is a centimeter's worth of fluid. It looks like a lot, but it really isn't. And this is just a live version of that. You can see the needle being moved. And if you look closely, you can see that the fluid kind of coming into the scar tissue as it expands. Uh, so when we were done with that, uh, Brittany came in and did uh, Z-Wave for about 10 minutes. And the thing was actually softer, man. Certainly there's less fluid. We've done her again since. I haven't seen her, but Brittany tells me that she's even softer than she was before. And this is just a video of that. So we put the little tegaderm on where we made the little hole. And then we did this little tabletop one we used in the OR. So get the picture. Shockwave complements a broad range of cosmetic procedures that I do, and I'm sure you all do as well resulting in uh, consequential complications or recovery delays, and it can enhance the outcome. Um, thank you all very much for listening. If you have any questions, we're open for questions. Yes, thank you very much for your presentation today, Dr. Salzman. And for those, thank you for those very also interesting and impressive images and videos. I'll take the <laughs> screen back. Give me just a moment. Okay, we should be seeing my screen now. And we do have some questions queuing up here for your Q&A portion. Um, okay. The first question here is, how has the Z-Wave helped after liposuction? Well, years ago, when external ultrasound first came about, um, and we used it to kind of spread the fluid out, and it was thought to do some type of lipolysis before you actually did any liposuction, it was really a good adjunct postoperatively for reducing the edema. This is even, that's this on steroid. This is so much better because it's the mechanical pulses help distribute this edematous fluid and that induration that you sometimes get. It just seems to dissipate more quickly. You can't start this usually on week one. They're, they're a little too sore for that. But usually by the second week, especially if you're doing 360 where they're, all the lymphatics are involved all the way around, this tends to dissipate that swelling more quickly. And it makes the patient, frankly, more comfortable earlier. Okay, I'm looking at some more questions coming in. And this one I think you got a little into in your emerging applications uh, portion of your presentation. The question is, have you used Z-Wave after other surgeries, for example, tummy tucks? Yes, we use it for tummy tucks all the time. Uh, we do uh, drainless tummy tucks. We used to use them with, do them with glue. Before that, we did them with uh, progressive tension sutures. And now I think we're going back to sutures because they stopped making the glue. Uh, but there's always some fluid. If you, if you do a, a, an aggressive tummy tug with a lot of lipo, which is what I do, there's going to be some interstitial fluid with really nowhere for it to go. Um, and it, it, we see this, this venous congestion that can last for months. And this really helps that venous congestion. We, Brittany will do it and lay the patient like from side to side. So you're kind of moving the fluid with gravity to the side and then trying to move it through the scar, if you will, down to the inguinal lymph nodes. It seems to make the, the, the patients 
lymphatic congestion better more quickly. And it makes sense. It's just, it's just, it's just doing massage in, in a very elegant way. Okay. Um, we have another question here. Uh, do you have experience using Z-Wave with sculpture? I don't own sculpture, so the answer would be no. Okay. But the way I understand that the way it works in, in causing uh, a 10 day apoptosis, it's going to be the same thing because we know that not every cell that's exposed to, to that, what I forget what it's a diode laser, as I recall, is going to die. Otherwise, you have a big hole. So it's a, it's a certain percentage. I think there are some that are definitely going to die. There are some that maybe are going to die, and there's some that are definitely going to survive. And I think with all of these non-invasive modalities, what I think is happening is the sculpture, whatever that's that, or it doesn't matter what's causing it, that those fat cells that are indeterminate, when you start hitting them with these pulses, it just breaks the cell that's just barely hanging on into little pieces, and it goes on. And not not apoptotic, it's immediate cell death. So you're you're exposing more of the fat to uh, a modality that's going to increase the amount of lipolysis. Okay, I have three questions here um, specific to cold sculpting with Z-Wave. Um, so I will read the three questions to you and you can maybe answer them, I'll address okay. them all. Um, very similar. So the first question is how has Z-Wave affected your cool sculpt patients and its business, part two of that. What settings do you use after cool sculpting? You mentioned 15 minutes of treatment. Is that in each area? And the third part is how long are you doing Z-Wave after cool sculpting? Uh, let's go backwards because I'll remember sure. them better. Uh, the 15 how minutes is the, is the whole thing. If they've had three applicators, the whole thing's 15 minutes. They're not in there, you know, a half hour getting the, 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 the Z-Wave. The second question was, I forget the second one. I know the first, we'll get back to the second one in a second. The first one, cool sculpting is the most commoditized of all of the non-invasive body contour devices, it, it, which means it has the best advertising, has the best knowledge base. And people will compare prices because they think that there's no difference between providers. Whoever puts the machine on and turns it on, there's not a whole lot of variables. And there's really some truth to that. It's maybe how you put them on, how many you put them on, but you really, there's no real settings on the machine other than on and off. Um, you can then charge more and charge a premium for what we call cool sculpting plus, because now you're telling the patient you're going to get more efficacy. And we don't say it's 64% better. We say it's at least 20% better and it's going to shorten the latency until you actually see the result. And so it's worth a couple hundred dollars more to do that and you're, you're changing the, the commoditization process where you have something different and you can name it whatever you want. We, we named it Cool Sculpting Plus and it, it just made sense to us. And so we've done well with that. I don't remember the second question, Regina, what was that one? Well, uh, someone had asked, um, how has the, cool, the Z-Wave affected your Cool Sculpt patients and its business? I think you, you answered that por uh, partially. And then this, another uh, part of the question was, uh, someone was interested in the settings that you use for Cool Sculpt. Uh, I, don't, I don't personally do it. Brittany, our Cool Sculpting uh, and Body Contour does all the Zimmer. And she starts out with whatever they can tolerate. It, even if people remember doing it with hand massage, no one just gets right in there and starts squeezing as hard as they can. We had to start more gently and break up that stick of butter. And that's the way we do it with Zimmer. We, we, we do it what's tolerable and then move up as you break up more of the ice. Okay, we can move on to another um, question here. Do you currently use Kybella and have you used Z-Wave to address the consequential swelling? We do use Kybella, but I have a huge selection bias against it. So almost nine out of 10 patients who come for Kybella end up with laser lipolysis if they're presented it in a, in a way that I present it. So we don't do people who have six, eight, 10, 14, 16 bottles of Kybella. I'm doing people who have one, two, and three bottles of Kybella. If they need more, they're having a laser lipo. So yes, we have used it on occasion. Uh, you can't do it right away because you don't see the swelling usually till the next day or so. And then the patient has to come back and have the treatment but we have used it. It works on any type of swelling, whether it's chemical lipolysis or heat lipolysis, or it works on any time you cause swelling, 
and you're, you're putting more fluid in the interstitial space, this will help dissipate it, improve the lymphatic redistribution of the congestion. Okay, Dr. Salzman, we, um, we are running a little bit over our promised 30 minutes, but if you don't mind staying with us for another five minutes, we do have quite a few questions coming in. Would that be okay? Sure, sure. Okay, great. The next question then, um, can you report any other applications for Z-Wave like scar reduction, pain management, paniculitis? Well, I've played around with, with, some, with some things and I'm not really to publish yet, but uh, to, to do fat grafting and to do high-def lipo, um, this works very well immediately post-operatively if you're trying to get a really smooth, while well, the patient's still asleep, you can actually see on ultrasound what the thickness of the fat is or what the thickness of the water that's left behind. And you can use this thing right after you're done. I have that little tabletop one and push the fluid around so that you can see, well, is this really fat that's causing it to be a little lumpy here or is it, so, or, or, or is it just fluid? And so it's another, you know, extra step, if you will, but we do it at the end of the procedure and you know, try and learn and assess our results. And for high def, it, it does seem to help them get better more quickly. It just softens things up. So we do use it for that. And that's kind of a, a newer treatment, but I, I don't do that many enough to give you a, you know, a number or anything. That's a, a once in a while. I think another application that would be cool, but it's, it, it requires some effort would be to use it like we used to use uh, external ultrasound that you put all the, the fluid in and it's all lumpy. And so it, it's a little hard to get a smooth result if what you're, all the tumescent is not smooth. This would make sense as a step between tumescent and the actual removal or ultrasound, if you're doing an internal ultrasound, baser, uh, to redistribute all of this fluid harmoniously throughout the whole soft tissue envelope. And then you're looking really at what the contour is that's relegated to the fat. Uh, of course, there's the sterile, non-sterile part, and so you have to get around putting this in a baggie and all that kind of stuff. But that's something that can be done, and I've thought about doing, uh, have not done it yet. So, on the plans. Okay, I have a question here that is very specific, and let's see how you okay. feel about answering this one. Here, uh, here comes. I read your paper on using the Z-Wave for capsular contracture. I've applied this to a patient who will have session six next week. Are you now right. just treating the capsules without the cap without capsulectomy, or is there recommendation to still take out the capsule and then treat with the Z-Wave? Well, that would be that would mean that there's a failure. Now we we always start. I look at this as a a completely non-invasive, no-risk procedure. It doesn't cost very much to do. So it's worth a try, and it hasn't failed us yet where it didn't make things softer. If the patient's recalcitrant to that and it comes back, we're not going to keep Z-waving them. We're going to go to the operating room and do what we should, should do, which is capsulectomy, capsulotomy, whatever you, you think is right. So we have started to use this in high-risk situations for recurrent capsules in a prophylactic setup, which is, I think, what this person's addressing. Can you then do the capsulectomies? All right, this is a patient at high risk. She's a smoker, she had free gel, she doesn't want a sight change, doesn't want stratus, like the first patient I mentioned, and use this in anticipation of a capsule prophylactically. And we've done that on a few times and it's worked. But this is not always gonna work. And I think the earlier you catch the capsule, the better. I've had one patient who was very, very thin, tiny little patient with tiny little implants, but the one side was up maybe two centimeters, but then lady that thin, you could really see it. And I know it wasn't the muscle muscle release because I've done it enough to know the muscle release wasn't the issue. And we just treated it with Z-Wave. And after about a month or so, that implant dropped down where we're supposed to drop down. And we've used it ever since in that regard if there's a high riding implant. We don't get that many of them. So I think it softens anything that's relegated to being fluid in there or that there's um, stiffness to the tissue from tightening of scar tissue. So plantar fasciitis, you know, it works. It's uh, We've done it a few times on friends. We don't charge anybody for that. Most of them have been nurses or people who work with us. Um, so any of those things will work. So the long answer is yes, I think you can use it prophylactically. Yes, if you get early scar uh, contracture or early capsule contracture, 6, 8, 10, 12 weeks out, yes. Even if it's late, two, three years later, but they've only had it for a couple of weeks and just notice it, yes, you can use it. If it's a well-established calcified capsule, with a broken implant underneath, we're not gonna try Z-Wave. I mean, the patient needs surgery. 
Okay, we'll do a final two questions here. And if anyone's question has not been addressed or, or if we can't get to your question, please know that we will email you answers to your questions after the um, webinar is concluded. Um, okay, Dr. Salzman, do you use Z-Wave for cellulite? And if so, what's been reported? Well, my definition of cellulite is very, very, very different than everybody else's. So our protocols only deal with a chunky leg where there's a tight soft tissue envelope. And that I call that chunk cellulite or tight soft tissue envelope cellulite. That is true cellulite that's there when they're laying down and is there when they're standing up because it's relative to those little bands that we showed in that monograph that they're being pulled tight between scarpus fascia and the dermis. Now you can go in and there's machines, you can cut them. I, I do it in a cool way with a 18 gauge needle and a suction device or you can spend $85,000 and buy a self-fina and do a little knives, but that pathology is treatable with cutting of the bands, whether it does with a laser or a knife, 18 gauge, you know, whatever. So it also will work if you can stretch those things and re relieve the congestion, whether it's by, whether it's by lipolysis between the superficial fascia and the dermis, lipolysis and removal of toxins, fluid or whatever, better lymphatic drainage, and then you're stretching because you're pounding on this, this uh, septum, that type of cellulite is amendable to this modality. It will work. For every one patient that I see, that we see in our office, who is a candidate, in my opinion, for Z-Wave, the other 10 or nine are not. They have skin laxity cellulite that is not cellulite. It is not treatable with heat. It's not treatable with cutting anything. You need to add, you need to add support inside the tissues, which no one's figured out how to do yet, because the issue is not the skin, it's the support structures. The, the things that are supposed to hold the tissue up aren't holding them up anymore. So this would not be the correct treatment for that. So when people say it fails, my question is gonna be, well, what were you treating? Because unless you treat tight skin envelope cellulite or chunky leg cellulite, this modality will not work because it's the wrong treatment. Okay, so final question here is, what do your patients say about Z-Wave treatments? Uh, patients love the Z-Wave because they feel better when they, when they leave. Um, I have it done every once in a while, just on my back as a massage. It just feels good. You know, it's like a, mm -hmm. you know, Chinese massage with the pounding of your hands. It feels good, it doesn't hurt. It, the only time it, they're, they're sore, really, early capsular contracture, if you start going too high too soon, it's a little tender. They won't say it's not intolerable. But it's a little tender. And similarly, after tummy tucks or liposuction, if you start too early, you try and do a day five, six, seven, eight, they're a little too sore, they're, they're not gonna be too happy. But if you wait two weeks or so, it, it, almost everybody likes it. it. There's nothing not to like, it feels good. Well, thank you very much for that discussion, Dr. Salzman. All right, you're welcome. Thank you for setting it all up, Regina, appreciate it. Of course, thank you so much. <laughs> if anyone would like more information about Z-Wave and Z-Wave Pro, please visit Zimmer Medicine Systems website at www.zimmerusa.com. You may also visit shop.zimmerusa.com to purchase accessories and marketing materials for your Z-Wave device. And this concludes today's webinar. Thank you very much for attending. A recorded version of this webinar will be emailed to all attendees so that you may review any of this information at your leisure. Good night.